Mathematics is the queen of the sciences, and number theory is the queen of mathematics. This is probably the most famous quote from Carl Friedrich Gauss, the greatest mathematician of all time. Well, let me rephrase that. Max believes Gauss is the greatest mathematician of all time. Either way, Gauss is still a giant of mathematics, and we will be back to discuss his quote in four, three, two, one. Hey, team members, and if you are not a member, be sure to subscribe below. We are back at Alien Institute headquarters, and we are reflecting on Friedrich Gauss's quote. Now, I recall one time hearing that philosophy was the mother of science because philosophers had many questions about the natural world. But since Gauss is Max's favorite mathematician, I've decided to bring him in to analyze the quote. Max, what do you say about mathematics being the queen of the sciences? Mathematics is the queen of the sciences. And Gauss, he is the king of mathematics. Actually, Gauss is often referred to as the prince of mathematics. And since other sciences are subsets of physics, many believe it to be the king. Thanks for handing the baton off to me, Heidi. Max von Neumann here, ready to talk to you a little bit, and I mean a little bit, about Friedrich Gauss because I could certainly spend weeks talking about him. Really, we're just going to talk about the quote mostly. In the original language, and forgive me for butchering the German language, the quote is, Die Mathematik ist die Königin der Wissenschaften. In general, mathematics is the queen of the sciences. The actual quote can be found, I think, in Gauss zum Gedachtnis. That's a biography published upon the death of Friedrich Gauss. Now, of course, his person isn't here anymore, but his thoughts are with us forever. Now, the full quote reads, and I'm gonna have to, I haven't committed this to memorization, but the full quote reads, mathematics is the queen of the sciences, and number theory is the queen of mathematics. She often condescends to render service to astronomy and other natural sciences, but in all relations, she is entitled to the first rank. Although Gauss was sometimes considered somewhat an arrogant figure of his time, he still gave credit to his predecessors. Like Isaac Newton before him, he believed Newton's quote which read, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. This idea of discovering truth by building on previous discoveries has been traced back to Bernard of Chartres in the 12th century. The point being is that Gauss studied the mathematicians and scientists of his past. Now going back into history around the late 1500s, or early 1600s, there was this guy that was dropping objects from the Tower of Pisa in Italy to show how the Earth's gravity acted on objects independent of weight. Yes, you are right, that was Galileo. Now, 300 years before Gauss's quote, Galileo had said, and I have to read this quote, he had said, The great book of nature cannot be understood unless one first learns to comprehend the language and read the characters in which it is written. It is written in the language of mathematics and its characters are geometric figures. Without knowing this language, it is not humanly possible to understand a single word of the book. Let me read the last part one more time. Without knowing this language, meaning mathematics, it is not humanly possible to understand a single word of the book, the book being the book of nature. 
Now, Galileo, in his statement, is saying that math is the language of science. And when, he, and when we think of how language has served humans, I don't think many would disagree that language is a queen in the development of humanity and all. Because math has been so successful at uncovering the nature of physical reality, and all sciences use some form of mathematics to describe their findings, mathematics is essential in making the kingdom run smoothly. The queen on the chessboard is most versatile, and she transitions across the board, as mathematics transitions across the sciences. There are a couple of Gauss's other quotes that are interesting, but I don't have them memorized. But in general, the quotes, if I recall correctly, imply that science is on the outside, exists without humans, and our thought and our minds are inside our heads. And mathematics converts the natural world into ideas and connections our mind can understand. Now, second part, the second part of the quote we are analyzing says, and number theory is the queen of mathematics. A short note on this statement, based on some things I've read long ago. Of course, if I had more time to reflect, I could present more insight. Now, I do recall Gauss being a bit fixated on prime numbers. It seems he had a strong insight that pure mathematics or math that doesn't always seem practical at the time would eventually find its way unexpectedly into the hands of an engineer or an architect that would find a very practical use for those very abstract thoughts. I think I also remember reading that he also thought that several abstract ideas could be meshed together to create an advanced engineering project. These are just some rough thoughts. I'd be interested in some alternative interpretations. So make sure you blast your comments below. Yes, there it is. 50 mathematical ideas you really need to know. If you do not have it, obtain it by striking the link below. It could be considered a textbook for our training. The next part of the quote is, she often condescends to render service to astronomy and other natural sciences. I'm not sure why Gauss highlights astronomy, but I don't think the word condescends is used to demean astronomy and the natural sciences. I think it's used to elevate mathematics. As a matter of fact, Gauss was a physicist and had many contributions to astronomy. Most notably, when the orbit of a dwarf planet called Ceres had, dis had disappeared behind the sun and did not appear as predicted by others, Gauss heard about the problem, took off his distinguished coat, and rolled up his sleeves and got to work. After a few months of grinding through mathematical models, Gauss made his prediction, which was proven accurate after Franz von Zach rediscovered the dwarf planet. Also, if you have ever taken a statistics class, you will certainly recall the normal curve. It is also formally known as the Gaussian curve. He had much influence in probability and statistics, and he observed through astronomical measurements that most measurements are close to the exact measurement, but they will often be off by a little. But the error will be equal between underestimating and overestimating. This small error is identified as the first standard deviation in both directions. Now fewer people will miss the measurement mark badly due to human error or measuring devices. Now recall, Gauss was looking at data from historical astronomical measurements. Similar to the first standard deviation, there will be equal over and under underestimates 
but fewer people will make bad measurements compared to the close measurements. These bad measurements represent the second standard deviation. Finally, the terrible measurements, which are very, very few, represent the third standard deviation. Altogether, the bell-shaped curve, or Gaussian curve, models the past measurements of the astronomical bodies moving through space. Think of a skilled archer, where most of his arrows are hitting near the bullseye. Many a little to the left, and many a little to the right. Note we are ignoring the up and down axis, and we're focusing particularly on the horizontal axis. Now less often, he misses quite a bit to the left, and quite a bit to the right, being the second standard deviation. And rarely, he will miss far to the left, and far to the right, hence being the third standard deviation. By the empirical rule, the first standard deviation holds 68% of the population. The second standard deviation holds 27% of the population, and the third standard deviation holds 4.7% of the population. The three standard deviations together encompasses almost 100% of the measurements. We will talk more about this when we cover stats, but the point for this segment of our discussion is that I believe that Gauss admired astronomy and for sure physics, but he elevates the importance of mathematics by diminishing the level of the other disciplines. Now, the final part of the quote reads, but in all relations, she is entitled to the first rank. She is the pronoun still referring to the queen. And the statement sums up the whole quote. The queen on the chessboard is ranked the top piece for mobility. And Gauss has concluded, after all is accounted for, mathematics is still the strongest piece for humankind to make sense of our mysterious universe. And here, as members of Alien Institute, it is our passion and our venture to make sense of that very same universe in which we live. Do not forget, strike the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of the video screen.